Hi, I'm Rabir. I'm Matt. And this is I'm like, and this is me. All right, Matt. All right, Rabir. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Excited for this video? Yeah, I am excited for this video. We've been recently, we've been trying not to do these genre specific sound like rigs. Exactly. In so an ultimate fashion. Exactly. Trying to find, using the knowledge we've gained over the few years of doing sound like, mm -hmm. um, what is the gear that we could get to make the best indie rock rig? Yeah. So, ultimate indie rock rig this time. We recently did classic rock rig and we've done before. We did. Um, like did ultimate sound like rig and the modern one and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys seem to really enjoy them. So, we're <laughs> going to keep doing them. Yes. Um, and today, we're doing indie rock. Yeah, so we're going to start a fictional indie rock band, mm -hmm. um, two guitarists, and see where we go. Let's find some guitars. Let's do it. So I was firstly eyeing up this. This is a Squire Jag, £329. That is a bargain. With Duncan design pickups in it, and of course you've got all the cool switching um, to be able to get. The kind, of, the t kind of tone I've got in my head mm. is that kind of twangy, Spring Reaver laden kind of AC15 vibe. I know exactly what you're going for. Yeah. So just to set the scene, I'm thinking to balance it out and get the full indie rock sound, I'll go something maybe more humbuckery, maybe a semi-hollow or something. Okay. And if you're going thinking Vox, I'll go Fender. Okay, wicked. Okay, cool. Um, the only other option I did have if we go this way is, and we don't really use them that often, but we've got the G&L. This is the tribute. Um, you gotta believe it. Doheny in Olympic white. This is 519 pounds. So it's more expensive um, by maybe 100 and something quid. But this has like a wide space single coils in it, and it will sound different to this. But you don't have your switching either on that. No, and I'm just. This will do the job because I know it will. But also, this has got a little bit more tonal variation. So I think in terms of bang for your buck. In, as far as guitar and tones go, this is better. But in terms of overall quality of sound and general like coolness, maybe this one. I don't really know. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking the Squire. Okay. In terms of, like you say, more variation, more bang for your buck. Yeah. This is all about a good value rig. And also, don't forget, you're in an indie indie rock band, so you need about a hundred pedals. Yeah, and how many indie rock bands play GNL, eh? So I'm thinking something semi-hollow and humbuckers. This came across my desk. Oh, nice. And this is a sparkly kind of green semi-hollow Ibanez. And this is only 339 squids. So do you reckon humbuckers or do you reckon, I don't know, something that's slightly thinner than humbuckers? Like, you know, you kind of electromatics or something. Well, this is where I was going to go next, around the corner to Gretschland because I, they're known for doing some very, very affordable semi-hollow guitars. I mean, I'm some feeling like... Some guitars are around eight, you know, eight, nine hundred pounds, but if something like this is a bit of a monster. I'm feeling like the marriage of this, that guitar and something like this is going to be way more... This is only 449. Yeah, I mean, fair. and you get a Bigsby. Do you know what, I'm going to stick with this. I've decided. And this is 399 in terms of maybe tuning stability, you've got no Bigsby on there, so you might find that a bit easier. But then you don't have a Bigsby to do your cool surfy tremolo. Well, there you go. I think you've answered your own query yeah, there, If Matt. I don't use it, I'm going to really look like an idiot. But anyway, I'm going to go for this. This is a great streamliner G2420T hollow body single cut in gold. Oh, it is gold. Look at that. But should we get some uh... beautiful guitars. Let's go and get an amplifier, shall we? Yeah, yeah. So, Vox is what I am envisaging for my tone. AC15 uh, is an absolute killer amplifier for the money. They have two, they have a greenback loaded one and an Alnica blue loaded one. But I still think I'm going to go greenback to save the money because I've got lots of pedals to get. So, Beer has gone Vox, so I'm thinking Fender. So I spotted this really cool thing before. Here it is. This is, I mean, it's a little bit pricey um, at 799 I might stretch my budget this far. This is the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe in Surf Green. We've used the Hot Rod many, many times, but we've never used a green one. And it has uber indie rock vibes. But obviously, color isn't sound. 
the hot rod will do us a good job, I'm sure, I'm sure. Saying that, there is a Blues Junior right here for £200 cheaper. Good speaker, smaller amplifier generally. You probably want to get yourself some pedals that like uh, tame it a bit because it's quite raspy. Okay. Um, well, that might have a different speaker in it. It might. So, I, hang on, let me do some maths. So I'm on about 1150 if I choose that. It's giving me 350 for pedals, which I'm gonna need. Okay, I've chosen my amp. It is the Fender Blues Junior in lacquer tweed finish with my Jensen speaker, 579, plus my 549 for my guitar. I've got about 350 quid, how about you? Yeah, I mean, my guitar's 329 and my amplifier, I don't know how much my amplifier is, but I reckon I'm about 900 pounds. I think right, the Vox so AC15 is like, yeah, it's about 650, 700 quid. All right, let's go and get some pedals. So I'm drawn towards EHX when it comes to the subject of indie rock. Um, I think the two go hand in hand somehow. In any case, I'm going to get the EHX analog delay, the memory boy. Is that the memory toy? Oh, is it? Yeah, it's even, even smaller. Memory Boy's over here. Oh, it is, isn't it? A bit more pricey. Okay, yeah, no, the Memory Toy. So it's a little tiny pedal. does delay. I don't need much. Um, so I'm going to get that. And I've got reverb in the amplifier. Um, so I don't need to get anything like the um, Holy Grail. Even though that does do a good job. I'm also going to get myself a Boss GE7 because, let's face it, <laughs> Likewise. we always use the G7. We use the G7 a lot, but I think a, an EQ in general is a, good, is a good principle. Yeah, I want a fuzz too. Basically, there's like a micro amp or distortion plus or something like that, and a fuzz. Those, so I've got the memory toy. I'm going to get a G7. I'm thinking I'm going to get the... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the MXR uh, micro amp plus. I'm Great. Do it. And lastly, I'm going to get myself a going to get myself a little big muff. Big muff. Oh. Okay, so I've been picking out some pedals. Bit of a challenge because I haven't got loads of money. Um, the DoD Looking Glass I'm going to go for, which is like a, a boost and drive type pedal. I've got the Tone City Angel Wing as a chorus, and then I've got the Ibanez Analog Delay. I'm going to pick up a G7 by Boss, and then I should get somewhere. Wish me luck. So we've got a bunch of pedals Uncle one, and guitars and we are going to rig everything up and see how it sounds. Let's do this. In the video room. Yes, we are in this endeavor. New one. To sound as good as we can on £1,500 in the genre of indie, it's the ultimate indie rock rig challenge. So, like last time with the classic rock rig, we sit down with the gear, we plug it in, and we go, Did we get close with our sort of our idea in our heads of indie? And I think we did this time. And then we write. Indie inspired in, riffs. In the style of, yeah. yeah. And it's generally not based around any band, but there's no. normally about like five different styles within the genre. I so think it's many. just our mental projection of what we think an indie song should sound like is what we ended up write, writing yeah. there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And hopefully you like our fake indie band songs. <laughs> sound like any indie bands in particular put them in the comments section maybe, maybe we'll look at doing a sound like of them yeah and have we missed is there any gaping holes in our indie knowledge that we should we should fill yeah um, and on, on that note <laughs> I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you my rig so 
I'm using a Squire Jaguar. Now, I'll caveat this by saying there's really light strings on this, so it wouldn't stay in tune. I think if you put thicker strings on this, it would be a really solid guitar. And as I said in the store, there's loads of tonal options. I was flicking around trying to find different sounds and managed to do that. So I really, really enjoyed using this guitar. And it's like 329 pounds or something. Yeah, very affordable. Great guitar. Um, yeah. And then it goes into the Microamp Plus MXR, which has a bass treble and a gain. And as you can see on the close-up pedal camera, that's kind of where I've been running it. It's really easy to use. And it just adds, gives a push to the AC-15, which we'll get onto in a minute. I think whatever the genre, something like that into the Vox always sounds good. Yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the little big muff, because it has that leady tone that did you a use lot it? of indie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of the excerpts we did, I used it as the lead line. Right. Because it just has that fizzy, fuzzy over kind of what you did. I, over, over it just sounded like indie lead to me. Yeah. Uh, and then the memory boy, which was on all the time. Right. Very, all the very, time. yeah, very right. low in the mix. Yeah. The blend was right down, but it just added something. Um, and then I ran loads of reverb on the Vox AC15. This is the green backloaded one. Sounds fantasmish. And yeah, let me just show you how it sounds without any of the pedals. So um, let me just work out what the pickups I was using were, but. Sounds great. It was this kind of sound, yeah. So this is without the memory boy for fir first and foremost. But if I add it, you hear how it makes the space in there, yeah. But then when you're doing stuff like what <clears throat> we were playing, that kind of for me, that's immediately kind of Jack White, Jack White inspired kind of indie kind of chord progression for me. It's really pokey. But yeah, it sounds really, really good. Yeah, and I've got really the full sound in the room. Top tone cuts nearly all the way up. Um, now if I add the microamp, so... It's like, plinky. Yeah, very plinky. But it's very not really plinky. harsh, but it's just plinky, you know, it cuts through. And then, stacked on top of that was the little big muff, and as you can see, more or less 12, 12 uh, to give me this kind of sound. Very nice. So actually, irrespective of the <clears throat> genre, you've got a great sounding, really tonally versatile rig. Yeah, agreed. Um, and well within my budget, really. Yeah. So. Matthew. On to me. Over here I have my Gretsch Streamliner hollow body guitar with fitted with this beautiful Bigsby here. Um, these kind of Filtertron style pickups. It's a total hollow body in this sparkly gold finish. And these not I like, I like the block inlays here. Really nice. Classy used, looking guitar. Yeah, we've used similar things before. Um, that's running straight into the, the DOD looking glass, which is kind of my over D push the amp type vibe. Um, then into an EQ, which I just thought would be useful to take out some of maybe a little bit of the harsh tones and give it a push when I if there's any lead bits. Mm. Um, the Angel Wing Chorus by Tone City, and then into the Analog Delay by Ibanez, and that's all running straight into the front of this, which I'm sitting directly in front of, but you can probably see it here, is the Fender Blues Junior in a nice tweed with a Jensen speaker. 
Nice. I didn't actually use a GE7 in the end. You didn't? No, because they only had one. Oh, if I'm sorry. I at the time, it. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter. Let's have a listen. So this is what it sounds like. Spacey. Spacey. It's even more spacey, Rabia, when you add the angel wing chorus in, which I did for a little bit of the time. Wouldn't you say it sounds more heavenly? Yes, you might. But, cool. And with the analog delay by Ibanez, even more so. Now, we didn't really do any particularly super, super duper clean sounds, so the no. Looking Glass by DoD really came into its own. So the GE7 really adds, it always adds just a little it. bit of bite, yeah. In such a nice way. Generally just like a couple of mil above above the middle. Um, and you watch the frequency pulled out there, it's like... 800 hertz. 800 hertz, so a bit of mid-range. So there you go. Sounds nice, big and full. I mean, chor definitely... chorus is optional. Yeah, um, but it adds a certain element to it. And to be fair, what I really like is how these two tones work together. Y yeah, I think you really need the, the thicker one, which yeah. I was going for. Which is what and, that is. And the more dreamy type yeah. vibe from The here. plinky, leady, yeah, cut yeah, through yeah. kind of sound. <laughs> It's worth saying, I wanted to say this before, that, that playing these kind of rigs and just having the opportunity not to learn someone else's stuff, yeah. but just to kind of go, hey, what can we make up that's kind of in the style of the genre, is so much fun. Yeah, it is great fun. Uh, and I think that's probably why we're going to keep doing these. Yeah. We, we, we saw a comment on a video recently that was something about doing decade-inspired uh, ultimate rigs like, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, that kind of thing. So that's another option alongside genres that we haven't yet touched on. So if you've got any ideas, put them in the comment section below. Yeah, let us know how you think we did with the Indie Ultimate Rig. Um, and also, yeah, any ideas you have, let us know. We do read the comments and we do take them into account. We do. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. All the links in the description box below. For all the gear. And that leaves us with one thing to say. It does. I've been Matt. I've been Rabia. And this has been Sound Like on Anderton's TV. Goodbye. Ciao bells.